Before the charges were announced against the suspect, I spoke with the aunt of shooting victim Ralph Yarl and asked her how the family is holding up. Take a listen. Despite of everything, we are grateful that he is alive because considering what he went through, I don't think the person who did this intended that he would be alive. So mm. we are very, very grateful that he is still with us. We still see him. I can still hug him. His siblings can still hug him. So yes, we are grateful. We are upset. We are angry. But we also understand that it could have been a lot worse. To think that you have been shot twice, once in your head and once in your arm, but yet you find the will to get up and run to look for help. But yet you're turned down two times before finally someone tells you, put your hands up and get on the ground in order for them to help you. That, it breaks my heart to the Because clearly he needed help. But this is America. Ralph Yarrell's family attorney, Lee Merritt, joins us now. Thank you so much for talking with us. And what's your reaction to the charges filed late today? Lindsay, we're extremely relieved by the charges finally coming forward. You know, justice delayed is justice denied, and we believe that charges could have been filed sooner and that the, the suspect could have been identified and arrested sooner. Uh, but now that the charges are going forward, and we know that there are two felony charges that uh, together he's facing up to life in prison, and that is a huge relief for the family. From what you've seen so far in the early stages of this investigation, do you feel that justice is being carried out in this case? Well, the early parts of this investigation have given me reason to pause and believe that uh, maybe justice would be uh, evasive in this case. However, because of the national outpouring, because of the community of Missouri that stood up, because of all the national organizers and, and, and people who have lent their voice, it seems that the prosecutors and law enforcement agencies on the ground are taking the case more seriously. Um, Ralph just got off the phone with the president of the United States today who assured him that, you know, uh, that he was and the rest of the nation was invested in justice for him. So let's just get an understanding of the extent of his injuries, because a lot of times people are going to hear, you know, that he was shot point blank in the head. And yet days later, he's talking coherently to the president of the United States. Just how bad uh, is he off? So he is doing remarkably well, considering the very serious nature of his of his injuries. It almost you almost expect to hear that the bullet somehow missed or didn't go where it was targeted to go. But a bullet penetrated his skull and entered his frontal lobe on Thursday. Uh, doctors were taking bullet fragments off the frontal lobe of this 16 year old boy uh, uh, ahead. And he also suffered an additional gunshot wound in the, in the arm. The fact that he is able to talk to anyone at all is, in fact, a miracle. Um, and so it's hard to really explain the injuries and then talk about how well he is and what his prognosis is, because it makes you believe that what happened actually didn't happen. And, and you said that on Friday, Ralph was able to speak directly with police. What can you tell us about his statement to them? Well, on Friday, law enforcement officers, two officers with the Kansas City Police Department entered uh, uh, the young man's bedroom, uh, hospital bedroom, and began to take statements from Ralph. Uh, uh, Ralph was present with his auntie. It was recorded. And Ralph gave the narrative that you've heard repeated by uh, his auntie since, Dr. Fade, uh, describing exactly what happened. Have officials shared any details on why the homeowner says that he felt it was necessary to open fire? So far, we've received no explanation for that. Uh, you know, we've heard uh, aversions to the stand your ground doctrine or the castle doctrine available in Missouri to home uh, people in their home when they believe their home is under attack uh, to use force to protect it. But so far, there's been no evidence even from the, uh, the suspect himself that uh, uh, Ralph ever represented a, a specific threat uh, to him or to his home. And when we're talking about this happened on Thursday, it, these charges didn't come down until today, four days later. Have police given any explanation for the delay? Yeah, law enforcement agencies have officers and KCPD have offered two explanations for why they didn't make an immediate arrest, but both have proven false. The first was that they didn't have a statement from the victim. 
I, I argue that they wouldn't have needed a statement from the victim based on the evidence that they had at, on Thursday. However, they did get that statement on Friday, and we, you know, there's they have record of that. The second piece of evidence that they've offered is that the law or the rules in and in, in Missouri don't allow them to hold the suspect for over 24 hours. Kind of a, a, alluding to there is a. a, a affirmative defense in place like the castle doctrine and we cannot can't hold them unless there's evidence of a crime but again all, all of that is negated by the fact that they did get a statement directly from the victim from his bedside and, and ralph is recovering at home now how long uh, is the road to recovery for him well because he suffered a traumatic brain injury there's still swelling on his brain and and, and the, he, his skull is still cracked uh we're talking years down the line before he's ever fully uh, recovered from these injuries. Now, everything that's happened to him up until this point has been a miracle. And the family is cautiously optimistic that he will continue to pro progress uh, much faster than expected by doctors and, and much more uh, completely than would be indicated by the severity of his injuries. What does justice look like for you in this case? Justice looks like an arrest warrant being issued and um, the suspect being pick picked up right away. Uh, so we're glad that that step is is has been taken care of. But we want to see a full prosecution. We want to see this man held accountable to the full extent of the law. Uh, there has been discussions about the racial components of this crime. And there is uh, consideration whether or not uh, those charges go forward. We know the state decided not to move forward with those charges. But they argued that this, the charges would have made the prosecution of this individual less effective. He would have received less time with the hate crime statute. So full justice in this case, maybe Missouri reconsidering the strength of its hate crime uh, statute. Lee Merritt, we thank you so much for joining us and, and giving us your time tonight. Thank you for having me. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel and don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.